Welcome to the Visionaries Podcast, sponsored by Alchemy. I'm your host, Jim Maroos. The Visionaries Podcast shines a light on financial institutions at the cutting edge of digital transformation, providing you with the tips and tricks to elevate your digital game, no matter what size your organization is. Whether a customer wants to do banking in person or online, the need for multilingual services is more important than ever to put customers and members at ease. United's Community Credit Union, headquartered in Oregon, has made a commitment to providing inclusive financial services. This includes offering communications in both English and Spanish. The credit union's website is already available in both languages, with the bilingual chatbot being introduced today. My guest in the Visionary Podcast is Corlinda Wooden, Senior Vice President and Chief Retail Officer at United Community Credit Union. We discuss how committing to underserved communities has resulted in historically high growth and historically high customer satisfaction ratings. With Hispanic member growth reaching 32% in 2022, United Community Credit Union made it a mission to reach this emerging segment by offering communications that simplify the member journey. As part of this commitment to providing inclusive financial services to the communities it serves, Unitas developed a Spanish language chatbot to supplement their virtual engagement platform. Corlinda, before we discuss what makes Unitas Community Credit Union unique, can you share a bit about your extensive financial services background, your current responsibilities, and how these relate to the initiative that we'll be discussing? Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jim. So I have been in the financial services industry for over 25 years now. I started out with the, the big national banks and then moved into the credit union space in 2007. And once I did that, I just never looked back. I completely drank the credit union Kool-Aid, as we call it, and I have enjoyed my journey since then. So I was with Unitas uh, originally as a regional manager overseeing their branch network. And then my husband had an opportunity to move to Texas for his career. And so at that point, um, our girls were young enough that we said, okay, let's go ahead and make the move. And so I stepped into the arena of consulting for credit unions. So I consulted on leadership development, sales and service. And then I also uh, worked part-time for Filene Research Institute, which is like a think and do tank for the credit union industry. And so in that time, I helped manage their financial services accessible incubator and uh, reaching minority households incubator. And so that got me some different experience that um, then when we you know, returned back from Texas because it takes a village to raise our family and we're born and raised Oregonians. Uh, we moved back to Oregon and uh, my former boss at the time tapped on my shoulder and said, hey, we have another opportunity at Unitas in a um, chief retail officer role. Would you be interested in coming back? And so I came back with that wealth of experience and then I was able to tap into that to roll out some really amazing initiatives to support our Hispanic community. Back in 2019 is when that, that journey first started. Boy, it's interesting because you were you're were already looking at, you know, serving the underserved communities when you were in Texas, and then you came back and actually were able to implement it. And as I mentioned before the podcast began, I, I wouldn't necessarily have thought that the Hispanic market was that significant in Oregon or in Washington, but the reality is it's a reality across the entire country, and it's something we sometimes take for granted and we take for granted sometimes as English speaking uh, people like I am that we don't have this language barrier everywhere. So before we dive into the details of your new chatbot and other innovations to serve a broader market initiative, can you give us a little bit of an overview of United's Community Credit Union's overall mission and values to see how this all fits into the, the bigger picture? Yeah, absolutely. So we have been around for over 80 years now, and we started out just, you know, the credit union motto, people helping people. And at the time, it was a telecommunications and telegraph uh, credit union. And so it was those from the phone company coming together to support those that needed lending services and, and you know, saving services. So uh, you fast forward, and we still have that motto of people helping people, but we've really taken it a step further of saying people helping all people. And so uh, 
you know, whether you are a United States citizen, you're an immigrant, you have a social security number, or you have a, an ITIN or an international tax ID number, we are committed to serve you and serve you well. And uh, when you think about our purpose statement, it's together we are working to inspire and navigate hope and navigate life's dreams. And, and we have three strategic pillars. We have innovation, inclusion, and inspiring service. So those drive our everyday you know, commitments that we set at the top of the organization and how we lead our teams, how we serve our members. And, uh, and so that's really a driving force for us. And then just this last year, we were able to do a revamp of our shared values. And so our shared values are things that, you know, the employees embody. It's things that we live and breathe every day to, as we work with each other and support our communities and support our members. And, and we added one of championing equitable access. And so that is a, a key driver for us as we move forward. You know, you know, it's interesting. You know, a lot of companies have great value statements, great mission statements. You know, everything looks great on an on a annual statement. But actually putting that into action when there's so many priorities is often really difficult. Could you provide some background as to why Unitas decided to prioritize bilingual communication options at a time when there's so many things on the table? When you think about what you had mentioned earlier, Jim, about the growth that, that we are seeing in the Hispanic community place, if you look from 2010 to 2020, the growth of this community has grown sixfold. So that is a huge growth. It is one of the fastest growing ethnicities that we have in the United States. And, and we saw that potential. We saw that when we were focusing on membership growth. And then we've also seen from, like I shared, my prior experience, as well as my CEO, Steve Stapp, his prior experience launching Hispanic community initiatives with credit unions he's worked at before. And then for myself, when I was helping credit unions with Filene Research Institute get up and running with ITIN lending. So we knew the potential was there. Uh, we also both identify as Hispanic. So I identify as half Mexican. And, and so it's a personal passion for us as well. And I will say it, it starts at the top. If you don't have that, that leadership support and you don't have the support at the board level, then you won't be as successful. So for us, we started this journey in 2019, and it was actually, uh, you know, we had come back from a World Council Credit Union conference, and we had talked about an action plan. What are some things from that conference that we wanted to apply and create? And, and that was really when we created a DEI, or Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion ac Action Plan, and then we also created our Hispanic Community Initiative Action Plan. And, uh, and you know, from there, we really just evolved to where we are today, but it is a multi-year journey. So we started it out as a three-year strategic project. So this was something that was set at the board level. It was communicated. It was a commitment that we made. And we know that this is, uh, you know, the, the cliche, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And so we're still in that marathon today, even though we've been one of the most successful credit unions to date. So, you know, we've partnered with Copera, who is an amazing partner in this space. And, uh, you know, we send out surveys to our staff, we send out surveys to um, our board, and, and we see how is our culture? How are we embracing this initiative? And in just three years time, we have moved from really like the discovery phase over to emerging, and now we're at embracing. So we've done a good job of making it uh, that focus across the organization. You know, it's so interesting. So in doing some research prior to the podcast, I went to your website. And your website has bilingual communication throughout it. It's not like a button where, oh, if you want our alternative website, here it is. It's integrated within the entire website. How long ago did that take place? Mm, that's a great question. So like we said, it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So we started out, uh, I'm a huge believer in progress over perfection. So we started out where we actually had just one landing page that was translated in uh, Spanish. And, and then we evolved to fully translating the entire website uh, at, at the very beginning of this year, actually. And so, uh, and we'll continue to evolve and continue to enhance so that we can move towards that perfection piece. 
You know, it's interesting because, again, sometimes it becomes a secondary thing. But if I'm an Hispanic customer or if I, let's say, have a, a, Hispa- a Spanish-speaking parent or something like this, and I see that your website has altered to really embrace what I'm looking at, and I saw it in your, in your report and other places, you're making it so that everything that the customer sees, everything that you touch, really drives to this. And and it's interesting, when I was doing research, I also heard or found out that you, you have a relatively large percentage of Hispanic employees. How has this commitment to the Hispanic marketplace actually changed maybe employee morale? Yeah, it is definitely improved. So when we talk about that cultural survey, we're now to embrace. Uh, I will say, though, you know, when we started in 2019, we had maybe a handful of Spanish English speaking employees. And today we have over 50. And so that is a huge proud moment for us as the organization. But it also speaks to the different pieces that we looked at to build and grow. So it's one thing to have a fully translated website or you know, to be the first in the Pacific Northwest to launch a Spanish chatbot. But it's if you don't have those foundations to support it behind the scenes, you won't be effective. So we've really focused on you know, how can we make our personnel really enhanced? How can we enhance our processes? How can we enhance our community partnerships and our promotional material as well as our products? So we've actually created new products specifically for this market as well. You're fairly advanced in the whole idea of, a, of an overall chatbot and, and a virtual branch and a virtual communication or digital communication experience. You had partnered to build this before. How did the integration of the bilingual chatbot, which I think is coming up in another week, I think, if not, or at the end of this week. Actually, we're launching earlier uh, this morning. So oh, there so. we go. What a great time for the for the <laughs> podcast. You didn't have to push it just for us. Um, <laughs> but what's interesting is this is not a standalone project. This is part of a, a much bigger digital communication process. How did you make it so that the pieces of that puzzle came together? Yeah, that's a great question. So at the end of the day, any new product or service we offer, we look at it of the lens of it needs to be translated in Spanish as well. So that is just our organizational commitment going forward. And when we first, uh, you know, we were doing a lot of things simultaneously kicking off in, in 2019 and then 2020, the pandemic hit, but that didn't slow us down. So we actually launched in April of 2020, the very first ever chat. And then you fast forward to today, uh, you know, where we're launching the chat bot and that virtual assistant, and now we're launching it in Spanish as well. So we believe, uh, you know, as part of our inspiring service philosophy, that there's always an escalator. Things are always, you know, the, that escalator is coming down and we've got to constantly be innovating to move up so that we maintain that in inspiring service. And we also know, you know, we've partnered with, we've created a a Hispanic advisory committee. So that's a group of folks that are members of Unitas Community Credit Union, but who are not employees and, and they are, they identify as Hispanic. And so we get feedback from them on a regular basis and they help us when we think about, you know, the, the purpose of having that translation is really speaking to the heart of the community. And, and so they give us feedback. Uh, we also do a really good job of not only making sure that we're translating material, but we use the trans creation. So not only is the the message, because you can use Google Translate and some things will come across just fine and other things it's like, oh, that doesn't really come across the way it was intended. So when you have that lens of trans creation, that's where the intention of your messaging and your tone really comes through as well. You know, it's interesting. We, we have a lot of podcast interviews that I do. And there's a big difference between those organizations, those people that talk about a vision, talk about a thought process, talk about a mission, and those people that talked about the tactical processes that were undertaken to get to where you're going. This is inspiring to me because it, it, we don't often get the dialogue that shares, here's what we did to do what we say. And that's so important. But that said, not everything always goes according to plan. Over the last few years, when you've been at United the second time around, what are some of the challenges have you been been up against as you try to implement this very ambitious plan? 
Yeah, I would say there's always the challenge of, you know, competing priorities. You had mentioned it earlier. How do we make this a priority? And there's always that piece that comes into play. Uh, there's a challenge of, you know, sometimes we get stuck in the the routine of doing things that we've the way we've always done them before in the past. And so making sure that we step out of that and say, well, what could we do differently? And what would the impact of that be? And and how you know, measuring the impact to help us drive our decisions. So, uh, so that way we can be the most effective with the resources that we have. Yeah. That, that the whole prioritization thing gets me difficult. I I've said it on many podcasts that when I ask financial institution executives, what's your biggest challenge? They almost invariably, every one of them say it's time, but part of the ways to bridge that. And we talk about often on this podcast is the ability to use third party solution providers uh, to collaborate, to not have to build it internally yourself. It not only gives you flexibility, but it gives you speed to market. And it gives you the experience of these providers that they bring to the table to say, here's a path you want to take to avoid some of the pitfalls others have had and to take advantage of some of the take advantage of some of the advantages some of these organizations have. Why did you go this route and how did that 30 part that third party solution actually help build this pretty extensive solution. Yeah. So just like you talked about, there's time and there's just resources in general. So, uh, you know, when you're looking at what can every single employee at Unitas achieve personally, sometimes we just need that extra little support behind the scenes. And that's where those third parties come into play. And, and so we do a nice job. We really extensively will, uh, you know, perform um, RFPs and look through and say, okay, let's look at all of our options and then go with the best one that matches our vision and our values. And, and that's really where our partnership with GLIA came into play. So that happened in 2020, and it's just been an amazing partnership where we continue to grow and evolve and, and create new products and services for our members. Well, it's, it's difficult, too, because sometimes organizations will say, yeah, but using the third-party provider is almost a duplication of what some of our other core providers can do. But sometimes it's an enhancement. So when you're looking at delivering modern solutions for a, a relatively small financial institution, the global things of thing, global scope of things, it's not an easy process. How do you keep pace with what's going on in the marketplace with organizations that have budgets far greater than yours? Yeah, absolutely. So coming from one of those big national banks before into the credit union space, I can appreciate what you're talking about there. And we do have a number of different you know, systems that help us achieve our end goal. And, and yes, at the end of the day, it would be a lovely piece to just be able to have that in-house. But I think the credit union industry does a really good job of partnering with fintechs and the fintechs want to support the credit union industry. And so it's, you've got these, uh, you know, great things that can be developed at, uh, you know, and oftentimes, sometimes the smaller organization that you are, the faster you can roll things out too. So, so that's another piece of that innovation. You know, when, when you look at building these personalized experiences, you know, a chatbot is one way to go, but you also have to humanize that experience. How do you look to, to deeper humanize the digital experience while you're using digital tools how do you make it so that each member, when they engage, feels like they're getting an answer for them as opposed to simply a pad answer? Yes, that's a, a really good point, Jim. And that's something that we are pretty passionate about. So, uh, you know, we have, you know, oftentimes you can roll out a service such as a chatbot in just 10 weeks. We took a little bit longer. We took about three months to really focus in on exactly what you're talking about. So it's customizing those responses to the values and the culture that we have at Unitas so that it does come across as a Unitas representative. Additionally, we work really hard to make sure that it's not, you're not getting stuck in a loop. So I just recently had this experience when I was trying to call a different mail provider to pick up a package and I could not get through and they could not answer my question and I couldn't get to a representative and it was incredibly frustrating. We have made sure that at any point, if they want to switch from that digital to that human element, we'll be able to do it in an instant. 
And so we've made that transition pretty seamless. But what's really exciting actually is uh, I wanted to share a couple statistics with you from this. So just in the month of May, we had our virtual assistant chat and we had just under 3000 chats answered by the virtual assistant and 61% did not require any human interaction. So that has shown us that we're doing quite well because when we first rolled this out in December, uh, you know, we were in the 50s. Uh, as far as that non-human interaction, and now we're up to 61%. So we're continuing to look at our responses, look at how members are, are you know, um, replying back or appreciating, and then we can make tweaks and, and adjustments from there too. It's not just a chatbot world you're doing. You also have a virtual branch, and you're really building a, a digital platform for communication. How do all these pieces work together and how do they move the entire organization forward? Yes. So uh, in my role as the chief retail officer, I oversee our branch network, our call center, and our virtual branch amongst a few other departments. But when you're really thinking about that experience that you're talking about, that's really that retail side of the house. And uh, I've led the vision of meeting people where they are. So if if you know that at a traditional branch, people come to a branch because they like the branch. They like the people interaction. So we want to meet them where they are and provide that amazing experience for them. There's others that really don't want to come into a branch. They want that digital. They want that in the palm of their hand, the ease of use and clicks of buttons. and uh, Or they still prefer that, that call center interaction of talking to a human over the phone. No matter what channel that member chooses, we want to make it the best experience for them. And we work to provide consistency from a service standpoint and that subject matter expert standpoint so that we're meeting the member where they are in whatever channel they prefer to come to us through. You know, it's interesting because in looking at your website, looking at your annual report, and look at some of the community events you're involved in, it is very clear that your overall focus has driven the organization forward to support multilingual communication, but diverse needs of underserved members just extraordinarily well, and not just do it in, in pieces and parts. This all seems to work together. I referenced the puzzle earlier, but it, it really is interesting how cohesive this is. What else are you looking at as far as personalized experiences or personalized engagement, maybe beyond banking? to actually even deeper support the diverse needs of the underserved members. Yeah. So when you'd mentioned, you know, our annual report and some of our events, uh, you know, we first were uh, received the designation of Juntos Avanzamos, which uh, means together we advance. By the way, I saw that and I said, there's, yeah. I, I, couldn't, I sometimes have trouble pronouncing names. I wasn't going to go there. So let's go through that again. It, just, it gets caught me because I remember that so well when I read your annual report. Yes, yes. So Juntos Avanzamos. And so that is a designation that credit unions uh, can receive from Inclusive, which is another uh, partnership in the industry. And, and really what it means is that we have done a great job of saying we are here to serve the Hispanic community and, and we've been vetted. And honestly, we were the fastest credit union to receive that designation from the time that we started our initiative to receiving the designation. So, so that's another proud moment that Unitas has under our belt. But one of the things that we're doing uniquely at Unitas is that we're not just having that celebration upon that initial designation. We have that celebration every year as an annual commitment. We're recommitting to our community that we are here and we are ready to serve. And here are the ways that we've continued to evolve just in this last year. And now we, uh, you know, because I mentioned in 2019, that kicked off as a three-year corporate project. Now it is just embedded into our everyday culture. And so it, it no longer has to be a formal corporate project. Uh, everyone has embraced and seen the, the opportunity that this, you know, can bring. Additionally, we're now transitioning to evolve. Not only are we, you know, continuing to hone in on our Hispanic community, but just multicultural community in general. And how can the work that we've done here translate and support the community as a whole? You know, this is exciting because organizations we talk to on a regular basis, doesn't matter how big they are, are having a really hard time differentiating themselves 
from other organizations in the marketplace. We all we all talk a good game, but that talk versus walk is very difficult to implement. I think what's interesting about your organization is you're not an Hispanic organization. You're a regular member credit union that is really doubling down on serving some important segments of the population. As you were just referenced, it ga- it now gives you the experience to say, how can we how can we double down in this, but also reach out to other underserved communities or other segments that are served very well, but we can do better than anybody else. I think that's really the message here as we talk about, you know, the takeaway from these conversations on the podcast is what can we all learn from this? I I think what's very interesting is you started from, as you mentioned yourself, almost a standing stop. You know, this wasn't a focus. And in, 19, in 2019, you really made this a commitment but it made it a commitment that also impacted who you hire, who who wants to work with your organization, who wants to bank with your organization, and the numbers show it. There's there's a financial commitment that shows that if you do, let's see, if you do good, you'll do well. I had to make sure the statement was right, but uh, I think it shows that if an organization really focuses their efforts towards getting a job done. It's all possible. And, and you referenced a three-month implementation program for your virtual communications and your chatbot process. I'm going, anybody would die for a three-month process. And you said it was a little slower than we wanted. But again, it's the, the benefit of a smaller community organization that really has leadership support and the focus to get it done. So, you know, I always like to look at this and say, okay, I see where you are today. But what are your aspirations for United Community Credit Union going forward? Yes, that's such a, a big question because aspirations, I think, you know, if 2020 didn't teach us, uh, if it taught us anything, it taught us that we have to be nimble and we have to be agile to what the world is bringing to us. And that's what we did. But there's other pieces that when you experience that agility that you're still wanting to move forward and make progress on. And this is one of those of, you know, just that journey of helping people fulfill their American dream, helping people remove barriers. There's so many barriers in the financial space that we can we can help pave the way for them and and just having a be a little piece of that pie and helping someone you know when we created uh, our i10 lending you know we had i10 lending and we perfected it then we added a new product of an immigration loan to help folks if they're going through that immigration process we also added a, an i10 mortgage uh, I'm proud to say that we have over 12 million on the books now. And, and if you think about that ripple effect of that generational wealth that we can help provide in communities, it just brings everyone up together. And, and that's really what we're striving to do. So we'll continue to evolve and find different pieces. So we know there's other products and other uh, experiences that we can continue to, to add to our suite of services. But at the end of the day, we understand that it's a journey and it's not just a destination. And, you know, that constant elevator that I mentioned earlier, but really we're always looking ahead so that we can do what we can do to help our members navigate through their life defining moments. And that's our our goal at the end of the day. Okay. So finally, there's organizations across the country, big and small, that are looking to define how they can serve segments. It may be an underserved segment. It may be a a small business segment, but you obviously learned a lot along the way. So what recommendations do you have to financial institutions that are trying to serve a specific segment? And probably more importantly, because sometimes we get stuck on stop, where should they start? Yes. uh, Remembering that progress over perfection is key because there's times when we were first doing things and I did get staff pushback, you know, in our first initial surveys, it was, we don't have any Spanish speaking employees. How can we help serve this market? And so it's, it's continuing to know that you will get there, but it does take time. So, so knowing that you've got those uh, foundational pillars that you work to create and then having those partners to draw in as needed as well. So in our case, uh, you know, I had prior experience, our CEO had prior experience, but we also leaned on Copera and Inclusive and uh, and then, you know, as far as the technology side of the house, Glia. So, so those were some key partnerships for us. And then it's also just 
continuing to listen to the community. So, you know, one of the other products that we offered uh, was a partnership with Remitly. Uh, and that came from me sitting in a room with some folks saying, what are some things that you wish you could had when you're, you're, you know, you're currently banking with a, a national bank now. And if you were to come to United's Community Credit Union, what is a product or service that you really want? And they said, I want to be able to, from my phone, send money home to Mexico. That is what, you know, listening to that feedback and then applying it with a product and a partnership is what we did. So continuing to have those conversations. Thank you so much for being on the podcast, Corlinda. I, I think it's interesting in that the podcast we're doing for visionaries for alchemy are interesting because the focus is supposed to be on modest size organizations doing things way above their size. And you're a great example and a great agent for change to show not only what can be done, but the mindset and the focus and the, the enthusiasm that it takes to get there. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much, Jim. It's a pleasure. Thanks for listening to the Visionaries Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into all the tips and tricks you can use to elevate your digital game. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to help support the podcast, please share with others in your organization or beyond. Post about it on social media, or maybe leave a thumbs up and a comment. This has been a production of Evergreen Podcast. A special thank you to your senior producer, Leah Hasledge, and audio and video engineer, Chris Fafalias. I'm your host, Jim Roos. Until next time, remember, more than ever, financial institutions can do well by doing good.